Daniel, what's the latest that you can tell us uh, on, on ground? What's happening right now in Israel? We are told there are a large number of people who've been held hostage uh, by, the, by the Hamas. When the prime minister very belatedly after four hours came out of hiding and said this is war, it was a gross understatement. We're, this event is something of an earthquake. Um, it is reminiscent of the Yom Kippur War. It was a total surprise. Um, our intelligence was saying precisely the opposite. It was a massive operation by Hamas, planned and trained for under our watching full eye, and it was a surprise. It is reminiscent of Yom Kippur War in the sense that we had a concept that we were loyal to and didn't pay attention to reality. Yes. It's reminiscent of the 1948 war because today there is combat with civilians involved on the streets of Jerusalem. Uh, there are a lot of rumors, but many of these things are confirmed, that there are Israeli kibbutzim villages that have been taken by Hamas. Uh, there have been frantic phone calls, uh, horrible, uh, from people barricaded behind um, uh, uh, steel doors pleading for help. There are reports of tens of Israeli civilians and soldiers being taken captive into Gaza. And I hesitate to say this, the image of Jews cowering behind doors pleading for help yes. also in memories of the Holocaust. There is no doubt that Israel will come out militarily with our hand on the top in the sense that there will be no Gazans left. We'll go through a terribly protracted and painful period about the hostage release. But at the Daniel, end of how the day, was Israel, if I may, how was Israel taken by surprise? What happened to the intelligence apparatus? What happened to all the cameras that are there at the border? Why wasn't there any early warning? You're asking the question that most Israelis are asking. And yesterday was the 50th anniversary of the outbreak of the Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur War. War. Yes. And one of the major topics of, of conversation was, actually with one of my commanding officers, Mitzna, could this happen again? And his answer was, of course. In, intelligence make mistakes and they become wed to preconceptions and they fulfill the wishes of the political echelons. Um, but there, this is a very shaking event for the Israeli public. It certainly will undermine the trust that we have in our leadership. Yes. Uh, the respect for the IDF will survive, but there are going to be very, very difficult questions. How is this allowed to happen? Absolutely. Absolutely. On ground right now, we are told that Operation Iron Sword has been initiated. What can you tell us about the attacks that are taking place? Um, I believe there are the fighter jets that are, that are out. Uh, what can you tell us about that, sir? We know very little uh, because much is under censorship. We have seen reports and film of Israeli attacks on Gaza. But the focus of attention is mostly on the villages, towns um, adjacent to the Gaza border, where there are just heartrending uh, calls to live television. I'm here with my little girl. The terrorists are outside my door and I need help and there's no help to be seen. These are images that are going to be indelibly etched into the Israeli psyche. Israel after this will not be the same. Uh, there are things reported that we're hesitant to report. They're too gruesome. And there are things that are unverified. There's a good deal of uh, psychological manipulation here. But it is clear that uh, uh, quite a number of the settlements along the Gaza border were taken um, and are not yet in control of the Israeli forces. Uh, but Extremely again, alarming. The of war. Would, would, we, would we have numbers in terms of how many villages, how many towns currently are under the control of the Hamas 
inside Israel and how many people would they have taken hostage and where are the police, where is the army, sir? Okay, um, as I said, the fog of war is, is, is all around us. You know, uh, we don't know exactly what's happening. I can tell you what I have seen. Officially, Israel has announced that there are more than 280 people wounded in this. Hamas has reported and shown clips uh, to the effect that more than 30 Israelis, civilians, and hostages uh, and and uh, and military troops have been taken uh, hostage into Gaza. Whether that's correct or whether it's psychological warfare, I cannot tell you. Uh, it has been confirmed that a number uh, of um, uh, of these kibbutzim, collective villages, have been taken, uh, Moshav, and there has been fighting on the streets of a city of a king. Uh, the precise numbers have not been released, but I've seen reports that there were seven such that were taken. I have no idea whether that's correct, and I certainly have no idea what the, the, the situation on the ground is. The question that you are asking is the same question that we're hearing from the people barricaded behind doors. Where's yes. the army? No, I, and I certainly don't want to imply that I'm criticizing the army in, in this sense. They're confronting a very difficult situation, and Absolutely. we don't know what's happening. But the situation is very grim. And is is our reservists now being called in? We are told that those uh, you know who are civilians are now being called uh, to come join the army and take on this battle and fight uh, to to liberate these areas. Uh, as you know, that the Israeli um, Defense Forces made up of um, the professional army or permanent army and reservists. And yes, uh, it was acknowledged by Netanyahu himself so that we knew that there was a large scale call up of reservists and people that we know have been called up to active duty. Daniel Seidman for what? joining me here on India Today. Many thanks.